Hi, I'm Diane Reevely from Dilusions and I'm here at the fabulous scrapbook.com and this video is going to be all about collage. So I am so excited about my collage sheets. Collage has always been my first love. Absolutely don't. Even as a child, I would cut up magazines and I would stick them onto pieces of card. Never really did much with them. Um, my dad used to hang a loose piece of wallpaper down the wall so that I could cut out from the magazine, stick it on. And then when it got to the bottom, he rolled it up and he put me another. I, now I think, oh my gosh, if I could keep all those rolls of wallpaper that I had. But I just loved cutting and sticking. So um, I haven't used collage for quite a long time because it's not really... Collage is made from magazine clippings and as, because I teach a lot, I can't go into stores and say, oh, they're not going to buy anything in your store. We're just going to use magazine clippings. And for ages, I've been talking about doing some uh, collage. Well, it was a book, actually. I was talking about doing a collage book. But a book is very daunting. So every time I got about halfway through, I'd lose the will to live. And then I'd use all the images. So I thought, right, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to make packs. And that was easy because I made this first pack, put it to one side, made the second pack. And that's worked really, really well. And there's going to be more packs in the future. So this is set one and this is set two. OK, I've taken them out of the packaging just to show you. And if you can see here on the back, there is they're very small. So don't worry if you can't see them all. But it shows you here all the different pages that are inside. And we have 16 of the full size pages. And then I wanted a different size as well. So I shrunk them. So we've got um, eight pages of the 16 half size. OK, and it's the same on here, the different images inside each one. Now, if you are into collage, you will know that these sheets are very expensive to buy. You can buy them and they're usually about two or three dollars. But I wanted them to be where they were really, you know, reasonable enough to you. So um, really, really good price. In collage, it's the paper, it's the quality of the paper. I wish you could feel it, but I'm sure maybe you could see it here. A lot of people just photocopy images and then when you come to use it, they'll wrinkle. They'll wrinkle with the glues you use. You can't ink on the top, you can't write on the top. So it's a bit of a false economy. So I was adamant I wanted this really, really good paper. But I just want to go through here. And you can see the large sizes. We call this, a, in England, we call this A4. But I'm, I think you call it letter size. These are all taken from my journals. And some I've cut into shapes like this. So I took them, I cut them out, and then I sort of doodled them to make all these sets. So you can see we've got the different, I have lots of heads in there. I'm only going to go through one pack, but I've got lots of heads in there. Lots, again, from journal pages. This was my, uh, my washi tapes because whenever I make anything, so when I come to do my washi tapes, I can't, I'm rubbish on a computer. I don't know how to do things. So I actually cut my journals up. So these were strips that were cut out my journals, made into the washi tapes. And I thought you might like to have them in there. Lots of legs, big images, and all these can be cut up and used however. Lots and lots of heads, you can see. So it's crammed full, 16 full-size pages. And then we've shrunk them all half-size. Just let me turn it. So you've got um, eight pages with the 16 images on half-size. So you can work just small, you can work just large, or you can combine the two together. When I was making a lot of samples, I started off by making samples from set one, then samples from set two, and then I just combined them all together because I thought that's what most people will do. So this is how they come. They come together like that. Now to make a col I'll bring it back. So to make a collage, here's some little examples of things. These were ones that I just, these were ones I made for a class actually, these little samples here. Um, to do this, to think to myself, right, I'm going to make this. I never think, oh, right, I'm going to start with this and then look through the sheet and cut it out. And then, oh, I want another one and look through the sheet. I have lots of cut out images already, OK, in these boxes. Oh, actually, I'll digress and tell you these are made with my sticky back canvas. These are just normal boxes. And I have sticky back canvas where you just peel the backing off. Sometimes I'll stitch them, but you can see I just placed them down. So this was an older set and these are the brand new set out. So this is actually, this has probably got, what's this got in? 
stamped images. You see, I carry them everywhere in my suitcases and everything. So I've brought out new canvas, new postcards, and these are all the designs of the new canvas. So I'll just pop that back there. This one, I like shallow boxes and I travel with them um, because then I can lift half of it up and I can just pop it into another box. So it's just easier to rummage around. And it's much easier to make a collage by picking up these pieces than it is to think, oh, let's go through this sheet. What can I find? What can I find? So this sheet I never cut out to start with. You can see it's the strips and I could cut each strip, but I want to show you how to make a faux patchwork board. You can see like here, can you see where it looks as though I've cut all these little bits out separately? And it's so simple to do. You want some nice big scissors and you're going to cut this way. You're going to cut across. You could you could go on your trimmer and do it, but I've, I've never have a trimmer. So you're just going to cut some. If you were on your trimmer, you could get them even, but as usual, it doesn't matter to me. So I'm just going to cut some strips across. Okay, so I've got them like this. And then what I would normally do is when I'm using collage, I always use my glue stick. The difference between my glue stick and everybody else's is my glue stick works. You could also use um, collage medium or you could use a gel medium if you want to, but I'm a glue stick girl. And usually I'm traveling on a plane, you can't have things like that. If you're gonna be using a gel medium or a collage medium, never go over the top because if you go over the top of it, that means you can't write on it. So a glue stick is perfect. So I just take one of these, I'm just going to glue it. You'll notice I haven't trimmed the white edges off yet. I'll trim those off later. And I'm gonna place this along the bottom, like so, stick that down. And then I'm going to take the next one and I'm just going to layer it. I'm going to cross it over slightly at the bottom. Now, sometimes when I'm making these borders, because I do love a border, on a page, sometimes I will cut out separate squares. If I've got more time and I will do something like this, can you see each one of these was cut out separately, all from that pack and I built it up. But when I'm in a rush, but I still want that, that look, this is what I do. So I'm gonna put the top one in. I'm gonna put the top one along like that and it this way actually along here and you can be neat if you want to but I never am and then I'm just going to trim this and then trim it down here so I just trim as I go oops go this way and then halfway through, you'll want to wipe your mat, a piece of dry kitchen roll. Again, if you use wet kitchen roll, you're just going to get a sticky mess. And just wipe. Can you see how it just bubbles up and the glue stick comes off? Some people use um, like an old phone directory. Do they still do phone directories? I don't know. But some people use that and then just tear the pages off. But I like a mat and I just rub it and do. So... stick here so it's a very quick way of getting a lovely border and as I say you can be neater if you want you could put it on a trimmer and then when I've glued it down I just trim it from the back so I turn the page over and then I trim everything if you trim everything to size before you do it you'll find it's changed shape and it's never the right size that you want. So there we are. That's just, you know, that's a, like a cheat border. Um, but it looks as though it's patchworked and it's really easy to do. And in each pack, there's lots of sheets like that that you can use. Or you can just, there's also sheets in here. You see, you could cut these up into squares or oblongs, but there's lots of things in here as well that you could do if you wanted to do it like this. Just depends how much time I have really. Here's a few, there's a few different ones around, okay? This, you can see here with the doodle, and I'll come to that in a moment. This is sort of a half finished one. I left that so I could show you because I do a lot of um, 
doodling round and you can't do it when your glue's wet. So I shall show you on there. So now we're going to look for images. So I'm just going to bring these two boxes in. Let me see, let me see here. And all, I'd never have any fixed in my mind what I'm going to do. I just look through in here. I think I'm going to use one of the, um, the shapes, the shapes like this. I think I'm going to use one of the bigger, just so you can see what I do with them. So, because I use them as bodies, I use them as all sorts, but it could also be a body. I can add legs to it. See, I could take a head like this. I could put an eye. I could, you know, all of these mix and match together and you can do all sorts with them. I could put this across the top. So, and again, I can, I just sit and change them around. I think I do like the smaller one, but I think I'm going to go for a big head. And I just place them like so. Let's have a look. No, it needs a nice big head on there, I think. Normally I have a little bit more room to, oh yes, there we go. So I don't, never glue anything. And usually when I'm working, what I would do is I would find the images for this page, then I put a brand new page on the top, put images on, put images on, and I end up with a stack of about 10 and then I start gluing. But I'm just going to do one for this. Oh, let's have a look, I think. Yes, there we go, I'm going to have this. So sometimes I'll have them standing on here, but I'm actually gonna have a coming right down the bottom. And you can see there's no right or wrong. You just look through the images. Oh no, I love the little cat. Let's have him. There we go. He doesn't look happy, does he? We'll have the little cat down there. Yeah, I'm going to have the cat. So I'm happy with that. So I'm just going to move these to one side and then I'm going to glue these down. Okay. When you glue in, it's really important that you glue the underneath things first. Because if you glue this first, then you can't move this. This is a quite simple collage that I've done here, but I'm going to leave it on the page and then I'm going to slide these legs out. I'm going to glue the legs. And then I'm just going to position them back there. If I was doing a really complicated collage with lots of pieces, I would take a photograph of it now so I remembered where things were and then come back to it. Now the body is underneath here. Oh, I might have a wing. Let me see if I can quickly find it. Oh, let's, flowers are good for wings. Let's have this. Let me see if I could have, um, let me just chop a bit of this off. This will make a nice wing. And we'll have a head coming this way. There we go, yes. So I'm going to glue the wing first because that's underneath. The people who don't understand collage are thinking too much into it. When people say, what's collage all about? It's about cutting out things and sticking them and smiling to yourself as you've done it. If you smile when you're sticking these things out, you're, you're doing, doing it right. If you're looking for meaning, if you're looking for anything like that, it's not gonna work. But the idea with these, well, the images are, you can see the images I've already doodled or started to doodle. You can doodle them more on top or as a beginner, you can just take them and have fun, go with them. I tend to use the large images in the large journals and then like my little dialogues and things, that's where I use a lot of the small, but I mix and match. This is from, the, these two are from the small and these are from the large. I'm just going to tip the head that way. And again, because this is a glue stick, it's easy. I don't get too sticky. If you use gel medium, you tend to get quite a bit that will ooze out. So just be careful if that's what you're using. I wouldn't use what I call a wet glue. And a wet glue is something, I'm going to put this over there. A wet glue is something like a, oh, I don't know what you would call it over here, PVA or an Elmer's or a Mod Podge. They are, even though these glues, you think they're wet, it, it, they're different. So if you, a gel medium or of a glue stick will work perfectly, but anything that's a wet glue is going to make these all wrinkle and ruckle and you're going to get everything stuck to your fingers all the time. So I've got the base of my collage down there. Um, but I'm going to slip onto this one because remember, this has still got glue around it. So this is one that was at the same stage here. 
I've used one of these as a seat this time and then she sat on a chocolate, she sat there and she just has an eye. And then I'm going to come in with the pen and just transform. So find my little, my little bag. There we have a black pen. I never draw, um, do this until everything's cured. But usually I will be making 10, 11, 12 sheets altogether. By the time I've done that, the first sheet is totally dry. So then that's when I go back in and doodle. So at the moment, these just look as though they're sitting there. So what I would do is I would take a black pen, I'm using my paint pen here, and I outline everything. All the collage has a line round. And this helps bed it down onto the page. This black line gives a bit of a shadow and makes it look as though it belongs there. You can use any kind of pen really, but I love a paint pen, especially for collage because you can write on top of the collage as well. I'm never very neat as usual, but you, you know, you can be really neat, but you just go around everything like so. And I hope you can see where now this bottom half looks as though it really belongs on the page. And I'm going to draw a neck because she'd look a bit odd if she didn't have a neck, didn't she? She doesn't look odd because she doesn't actually have a head. She only has an eye, but she, she does need a neck. So I'm just going to colour that in. OK, so that helps put it down. And it's the same with this outside. We can go straight round like this. Can you imagine if you had little bit spare bits of glue or gel medium, that would just get in your pen now, which is why I wait. But we can go right round the edge. But what I like to do is I like to put a border on there. So on here, I've just got like a little stripy border. On here, I've just got a stitched border. And here I've got a checked border. So I'm going to do a border and they'll probably speed this up because you don't want to watch me do this. Okay, so you can see the difference that just adding these uh, bits to make. I'll finish this one off and I'm sure we'll put um, a link to this underneath as well. But that's the difference. The other thing that I like to do is I like to bring out the stenciling more. So you can see here, that's where the cobweb is. So I just like to doodle. I'm a big doodler, so I like to do these things. Don't you know? Don't feel that you have to if, you, if it's not what you like doing. But I doodle everything. If it doesn't move, it gets doodled. And again, these squares here will just get doodled. The background was done way before. Again, if you do a background straight away, you don't want to doodle on it for at least three, three to four hours. If it's ink, it's going to be 24 hours, but with paint, it's three to four hours. And then the finishing touch that I'm going to add on here is I'm going to um, add one of my bigger back chats. They're not um, your normal sweet sayings. They're my usual sarcastic ones. So let's have, oh, let's have someday you'll go far and I hope you stay there. So you peel them up like so and you, you could put them on whole, but I tend to cut them. So I'm just going to split them into and I just sort of stagger them around. So someday you'll go far and I hope you stay there. Let's have a look. And they peel back up. If you, if you think, oh, I've put that in the wrong place or I don't know how it looks, you know, you've got so long before you can peel them up before they become permanent. I hope you stay there. And again, I'm going to press them down. And to outline them, you could either take, here you can see where I've taken the black pen and gone round it, or we could go in with the white pen actually on top. So this is the white linen paint pen. And you can see I'm just making little boxes round on the top. So there's two ways. Or you can just leave them as they are. It's entirely up to you. So there we are. So this was the half one I was making. This is one that I finished off and I'll get that finished off. So easy when you know how, isn't it?
Thank you for watching. If you liked this video and you want to see more from scrapbook.com, please like, share, subscribe and leave a message. Happiness is life handmade.